Solomon's Tales again, here we go. So hopefully you saw the last one. I haven't got to explain that again. He sat in McDonald's, having his breakfast, waiting for these two girls, A and B. A, the bad girl. Ah, so, sure enough, he hasn't even finished his breakfast. It's only probably eight o'clock and he can see them walking down the road. And it is they, it's not the tall thin girl she's not there it's a it's the barman and another guy who looks really evil and mean very well built Thai guy walking across the road and he thinks oh this is going to be trouble <sighs> okay I need to separate I need to get her away from them guys anyway they're coming over towards the hotel and Solomon waves through the window and the girl spots him. That's good. So, the three of them walk towards McDonald's and this is the lucky bit for Solomon. The two guys stop at the bottom of the stairs, some steps up into the shopping centre and that A girl comes up the steps in through the double doors and straight over to him on her own. And the two guys are literally 10 metres away watching. Solomon says, sit down says to her, I'm not happy what you do. Um, I want this finish now. I come again, hat you, I, I not want any problems. I not want to see you again. You understand? She's, yep. She says 3,000 baht for me, 500 baht for B or whatever her name is. Solomon says, I pay you this. You go away, everything finish, and no problem for me. She says, yes, puts his hand in his back pocket, pulls out 3,500 baht and he puts it on the table and says, everything okay? And she went, yes. She picks the money up and just off she walks. She goes down the steps, waving the money at the two guys and literally it's 10 foot in front of Solomon. He's looking down at them. She's waving the money at the guys they're all clapping and happy and looking at Solomon and laughing and they all three of them just start skipping off down the road he just got well and truly stung for 5,500 baht for two aerobic Zumba teachers okay there you go he thought he knew everything he thought he was streetwise the alarm bells rang, but he still said yes to the girls from the bar. He should have known, well and truly got set up. And he did the best thing by not <laughs> paying. Yeah, but he did the best thing by paying. If he hadn't have paid and he'd have kicked off in the room, could have been a phone call to police. If he'd have kicked off in the morning with those guys out there and said no, again, could have been police involvement, could have been anything. It's just he wants to stay in Thailand and he wants to find some work. He cannot afford to get in trouble anywhere. You want to stay below the radar in Thailand. Lesson learned? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Solomon got himself into trouble well and truly and stitched up. And here he is, sat in Hat Yai, when he could have been sat back up in Patea with Ning, having no problem at all. Ha, oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, of course, this put Solomon in a bad mood, embarrassed, his pride's been hurt. You know, this isn't good. And the thought of going off and doing a Malaysian wander around Malaysia for a month or however long. It's just, even though Patea's not his home, he's thinking, oh, I wish I was there rather than here, or I just want to be away from here, but I don't fancy going exploring too much. I think it's right. First things first, I've got to go to the border. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure. So, he's got his bag. He comes out at McDonald's. They've all gone. He pops into the hotel and says to the woman, thanks, 
I paid them, they went. And she said, yeah, everything will be okay now. No problem. Taxi. And she waves down to There's three cars parked outside. She waves to the one guy. Speaks to him in Thai that he wants, Solomon wants to go down to the Malaysian border and do a visa. Go out. So there's a taxi driver. He's like, yeah, seven, eight hundred baht, whatever it is. And uh, it's a, an old Toyota saloon, but quite nice condition for an old car. So Solomon jumps in. Guy doesn't really speak any English as such and he puts on some English music as if that really what Solomon wants and off they go so it's it's about 40 minutes seems about 40 minutes to get down to the border and Solomon's thinking right I'm not going to go Malaysia I'll just do the visa get a stamp that's the first thing he tells the, ta tells the taxi driver can you wait here he says, I've got to walk through that side stamp out of Thailand over no man's land which is about 10 meters stamp into Malaysia cross over the road it's like four little boxes well it's four little buildings stamp out of Malaysia and back into Thailand so it's got to go to the circle anyway off he goes <coughs> takes his bag with him just in case he can't get back into Thailand for any reason um, and actually the taxi driver says to him pay me now and Solomon he just gives him a thousand baht and said just wait Drives like okay, thanks. That's in case he can't get back into Thailand, he'd be losing his money. So Solomon does the four boxes, takes about 30 minutes, comes back in, and in the time he's done that, he's thinking to himself, New day, <coughs> excuse me, new day, let's do something different. Where am I? I'm on the south coast of Thailand. Um, I won't go back to Patea, I won't fly up today, I've got a choice, I could go cross country, three and a half hours in a taxi, probably 1500 baht, 2000 baht, to Krabi, or looking at the maps, half an hour across to Songkla Beach, um, quite a high population of um, uh, Thai, I mean it's not really foreign, it's not really a tourist spot, but it's beach. It's mainly Thai people are going to be there. He thinks that's only half an hour away, and it doesn't feel quite right. It's but maybe I'll go there, have a night over there, and think about what to do. So he says to the driver, I "Want to go Songkla round there? Hotel, beach." trying to explain to him what he wants and the driver's like yeah no problem and it, it's only again it's about 500 baht so, okay jumps in the car he's got his new visa so he's got a 30 day stamp which he can extend again for another 30 days at immigration so in the taxi off they go quite a nice roads a few windy roads get down beautiful beach nothing the sand doesn't look from the car it doesn't look it's sand but it doesn't look like idyllic beautiful beaches like Phuket and places but it looks okay um, looks like a British beach really and there's a beach all where this thing song club beach all the way down on one side there's a few hotels on the other side it seems a bit quiet there's a few shops and things it is like a British coastal town and he's looking along and the driver's driving along and he's so I was thinking, well, there's not much, here, not much to do here, is there? And he's looking and thinking, hmm, doesn't look that good. And the driver's like, Sun Cloud. And Solomon's like, oh, keep going a bit. Have more. Shop. Restaurant. He's like, hmm. <laughs> and he, so he carries on about, only about another quarter of a mile, and there's, there is a few shops and restaurants. A handful. And the driver stops and said, Sun Cloud. <laughs> you know. So I was thinking, oh, dear. This, this just isn't what I was thinking it was going to be. <laughs> yep, there's a beach, there's hotels. They're probably, a, I don't know, 800 baht, 1,000 baht a night hotels. There's a couple of little restaurants, but there's no, no shop in here. There's not many people around. And he starts like thinking, hmm. Anyway, he says to the driver, <laughs> I get, want a coffee. A 7-Eleven? The driver's like, yeah. 7-Eleven. 
and literally, again, it was only 500 metres up the road, flicks around the corner, there's a the 7 Someone says, I want coffee, you want anything? And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to get a coffee, cigarette, I'm going to have a think, stay there. So he's already given him a thousand baht, so it was seven or eight hundred down, give him a cut under a tip. He gives him another five hundred baht, I said, there, wait. <laughs> and off he heads, into the 7-Eleven. Yep, cheap and nasty coffee. Get some bits and pieces, a bit of food, a bit of pastry and stuff. Pays for all that. Comes out the door, lights a cigarette up, and he's looking around, and he's finding himself in this... There seems to be quite a few, um, I don't know, different looking Thai people, let's say. A different look about them. But nothing, just didn't feel friendly. Didn't It just didn't come across. He'd been, he'd been around quite a few places in Thailand, but it didn't feel like Thailand. It felt quite strange, actually. And he's thinking, oh, dear. So, what do I do? Cross-country, crabby, Hat Yai Airport. Back to Patea. Okay, if I go to Krabby, have a couple of days there, there's airport there, get me back up. Or I could even come back cross country and get the train up or whatever. He thinks uh, it's nice to have a bit of a break from Patea. I've already had a problem in Hat Yai. Been to Krabby before. There's not much there, but it's nice. A few bars, can have a bit of a laugh. Um, I think Mm. And he's, he's like, mm. he can't make his mind up. And he's like, oh, yeah, why not? Why don't I go to Krabby? I'll rent a bike and maybe go to the other, the other side, the areas I didn't go to in the last visit. See if I can find some other hidden beaches and, and you know, there's food there. There's nice hotels, swimming pool. Have a holiday. Have a break from Patea. And. It's not too expensive. It's quite cheap and crabby. As long as you don't go mad. He's not going to be going there for a hedonistic holiday. <laughs> he keeps saying that, doesn't he? Ends up with two girls. Yes. But, you know, as you're, when you're a single guy wandering around Thailand, you do tend to flick about and do a lot of travelling, more travelling than you need to do. You find yourself travelling so much and not enjoying the, the place. But where he's sat right now, or stood, in Songkla, it just looks so quiet. It's, if he goes back to Patea right now, he's back to the normal. But he's not ready. He needs a break. He needs a break from Ning and Frozen and everything. <sighs> anyway, comes back to the taxi, says the driver. How much? Take me to Krabby. I already give you uh, 1,500 baht down here. In and the driver's like, okay, see, 1,500 baht more, and that's everything. Take his crabby Onang. That's, all, that's brilliant, because he could have charged him more. He said, that's fantastic. He said, you okay? Take me. And the guy's like, yeah. That's probably three days' salary he's just earned. He's like, yeah, great. And Solomon said, I want to stop halfway, coffee, stop. And the driver's like, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, jumps in, throws a bag on the back seat, he's on the back seat, and he's just like, starts to nod off the driver, heads off. It's a lot of windy roads from Hat Yai to Krabi, a lot, but the scenery is amazing. The sort of hills that, they're quite strange hills, they're almost, I just have a look on the internet, all around Krabi and the south of Thailand. Those roads, amazing. Absolutely amazing, but not good as a passenger in a car that's windy roads. Brilliant on a motorcycle, I would imagine. So Solomon nods off and he, he wakes up about, well it must be about an hour and a half later. And the guy's nudging him. <laughs> Garage, 7-Eleven stuff, halfway. Or nearly halfway. And they're brilliant. Yeah, gets out. The driver gets out this time, goes off to the loo and gets a drink. And anyway, they, they hang around there for about 20 minutes and chill, and eat a little bit, get some noodles and stuff. On the there's like stuff outside 7 Eleven, people selling noodles and things. Bit of food, all good. Even sits with the driver. Um, and all good. 
so bit of a quiet episode for you guys next episode Solomon's gonna hit Krabby so he's been there before I'm sure he has hasn't he hmm didn't he meet Ning there have to look back a lot of Solomon's tales to find that one <laughs> so catch you on the next one Solomon does Krabby <laughs> and uh I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.